hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video i'm gonna talk about the clusters in the databricks okay so in the databricks we have two type of clusters okay then we will see like what is the difference between these two type of clusters then we will take a look how we can create the cluster and then later on after creating the cluster, we'll see how we can start and stop the cluster based on our requirements. Okay, so let me quickly switch over to the Databricks workspace. Okay, so this is my Databricks workspace. To check if the cluster is already created in this particular workspace, we can quickly go to the compute. Okay, so these are the menu items of the Databricks. You need to click on the compute and here, if you see, we have two clusters, right? So the first cluster name is all purpose cluster. And as you can see, we don't have any cluster in it. Second, the job cluster. Again, we don't have any clusters in it also. So in my workspace, I can say I don't have any clusters. Now, if you see here, the menu items are keep on expanding and collapsing, right? So if I want it to be expanded, what I can do, I can quickly go to menu option and I'll click on the expanded now it will not collapse okay now let's see how we can create a cluster to create a cluster you can simply click on the create cluster okay before this i i just forgot to tell you like what are the difference between these two type of clusters right like all purpose and job clusters so let me quickly show you what are the differences between these two type of clusters okay so yeah okay so if you see here the first one is the all-purpose cluster so the all-purpose all-purpose cluster is created manually it means we can create this cluster by our own self second if we talk about the job cluster job clusters are created by jobs so whenever databricks has to perform some jobs it will automatically create that cluster and terminate as soon as the job ends right but here it will be persisted till the time we will define if I say like my cluster should start and after starting, it should remain activated till 20 minutes. It will keep on activating. It will be activated, right? And after 20 minutes, it will be uh, terminated or you can terminate based on your requirement. So you can control your cluster here by your own self. The third thing, the third point is suitable for interactive workbooks. So if you wanted to perform or if you wanted to write some code and based and uh, you wanted to execute those cell independently and check what is basically behind those code. So in that way, in uh, for those purposes, basically you need all purpose cluster. But the job cluster is suitable when the when we don't have to execute the individual cells, but in instead of that, we wanted to execute the entire flow automatically. So we don't have to go and dig into it, right? Now, all purpose clusters can be shared among many users. So let's suppose this workspace can be shared by multiple team members, right? So they all can share this uh, all purpose cluster. But if I talk about job cluster, it will be isolated since it is created and terminated based on the different type of jobs. It will be auto controlled by the Databricks. All purpose clusters are expensive right because we create it and sometimes it it is activated till sometimes right so it is somewhat ex expensive however the job clusters are created by databricks itself or spark itself and they they are dependent on the type of job we are executing so that's why they are cheaper so these are the differences between the all purpose and the job clusters so as you can see we can create only all purpose cluster so we'll quickly take a look how we can create the all cluster all-purpose cluster so we are on the all-purpose all purpose cluster tab click on create cluster you can name it based on your uh, requirements or based on the uh, naming conventions okay so I usually write like this let's say test some something right okay now you can see cluster mode right you can see there are multiple cluster options like standard single node and high concurrency 
we will go with the standard mode because in the single node it will be executing only one single node and maybe in the single node maybe four or five jobs right based on the settings but in the high concurrency it will extend its uh, uh, i mean based on the requirement it will keep on extending the nodes and which will be very costly for our uh, subscription right so i'll be taking the standard one normal one only and uh, databricks runtime version it is fine you can take whatever it is there by default then you can use photon acceleration if you want to i mean process your data so fast terminate it after 120 minutes as i said you can set the timings i will keep it as 20 minutes after 20 minutes it should close uh, it should basically terminate and then the worker type you can select the type of node or type of uh, the processor you want in this spark cluster okay so i'll not change it as of now i'll keep it as it is because this is the minimum one i think yeah and uh, here also if you see yeah so if you see it will give you an option to select different type of core processors and other things right so you can select whatever you want but i usually go with the basic one okay and it will give you the estimate right how much it will be chargeable okay so for every this dbu the this option you have selected it will charge two rupees or uh, two rupees to six rupees okay in advanced option oh it's not giving me the scroll okay let me scroll it here yeah so in the advanced option as you can see you can put some tags some logging some initial scripts if you want right but for the timing i'll not changing any of these things i'll just keep it as it is i'll see if there is any small core processor here 122 gb yeah so i think this is fine we have this one and six i have so remember there is one 8 gb thing also so I'm just, just taking a look of it. OK, leave it. Uh, I'll keep it as 14 GB and four cores for the timing and we'll click on the create cluster. So as soon as you'll click on this create cluster, the cluster will be um, in progress to create. OK. So minimum workloads two and the maximum workers will be eight. Yeah, so the based on your uh, core processors, right, you uh, these uh, minimum and maximum workers will be defined, like the nodes and everything. So it will take some time, but once it is done, your cluster will be ready to so that you can start and stop the cluster and based on your requirements, you can use it. Okay, so I'll be, yeah, so I'll stop this video now. And in the next video, I'll show you that this cluster is start, this cluster is created and we can start and start running our code. Okay, so thanks for this video. Thanks for watching this video.